I'm going to begin by sharing that uh, I was, um, I had a, I guess you would say a religious experience back when I was 12 years old. That I was in church, the power of God came on me, never experienced it, I was 12. And my eyes, I know I got big eyes, but they were about this big when that happened. And I, I never had felt the anointing, I never even heard people talk about the anointing, I didn't even know it existed. And all I could, I could hardly breathe. And what's funny is I was sitting in the front row of the United Methodist Church, and I had on a white robe because I was an aqualite that day. And if anybody in the Methodist Church knows what an aqualite is, they would take the young girls, they put them in a little white robe, you know, they look so cute, the little hair. And our job was we would go up and we would light the candles before the service started, and we would open the great big Bible. And then at the end of the service, we would walk up in a nice little orderly fashion, snuff out the candles, and close the big Bible. That was our job. That was the tradition of the United Methodist Church. Well, I'm sitting there in that nice little white robe, and the Spirit of God hits me. And, and I'm sitting there, and I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to say. I'm just sitting there, and I'm looking at my other little acolyte friend going, what's going on here? And then I heard God speak to my heart, and he said, I want your life. I want your life. And frankly, as a little 12-year-old, I, I said to myself, well, I thought you already had it. But he didn't. So there is where God took my life. Uh, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1979. I was in college. I was a sophomore. And I was living in an apartment. I was alone. And I was uh, trying to study Western civilization. Thank you very much, Jesus. And I had to put the down for a little bit. And I just started praising God. It was such a warm, beautiful day outside. I just started worshiping and praising God. And in the next minute, I realized I wasn't speaking English anymore. I was praising God in the, in the spirit. I was praising God in the sun. In, in the... In the in the spirit. Now, so all that's happened to me. God has been working in my life up to that point, working in my life since then. Now, I want to show you something. I want you to go to Luke 9, verses 1 and 2. Jesus, he said, Then Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and sent to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So let's see. It says he called his 12 disciples together. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Okay, amen to that, brother. Now, turn with me to Luke 18. I'm going to begin in verse 31. I want you to see something here that we may never have seen before. And if you've never seen it before, it goes right along with what I'm going to share. Right, Luke 18, verse 31. And then Jesus took unto him the twelve. And he said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and he shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and they shall put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Now look at this next verse. These are the disciples that went around to casting out devils and healing the sick and preaching the kingdom of God. And look what it says in this next verse, verse 34. And they understood none of these things. Did you get that? The disciples didn't understand. It said they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. They didn't understand the gospel. They didn't know it yet. Now, turn with me to Luke 24. Down the Luke road a little bit further. Luke 24, 45, Jesus is risen from the dead. And look what he says, or look what he does to his disciples. 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Amen. Do you see that Jesus had to open their eyes to see the scriptures? Same thing with me. I was born again. I had an experience with God. He spoke to me. He said, I want your life. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I did not have the scriptures open to me. I read the Bible through at least once before I was 17. I read it through several times since then before I came to water of life. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read in verse 14. It says, but their minds were blinded. Until the day remained the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Notice it says, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remained at the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. 
But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Look at verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Amen. And if you look at the New International Version, verse 16 says, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Amen. The veil is taken away. You know, when I came, uh, like I shared, God had my life. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. In 1983, I went to Pennsylvania. I went to a church. I was watching the satellite. And um, uh, a prophet of God spoke to me a word. He said, I'm going to send you to a place where you're going to learn how to follow me. And you know what happened when I got here? The veil came off. When I sat in those blue chairs, I think it was the second week, the veil came off. And Dole read, and I believe it was about the... Um, I believe it was about the law being ended, that the law was taken away, that the, that the law was taken away. And I remember sitting, I was sitting right over there about where Pam was, and I was looking at my Bible, and Doyle said, now look down and read with me. And I looked down, and I went, oh, my Lord. It hit me like a knife in my stomach. And I remember looking at that word going, my God, it's written in here. Why have I never seen it? Because the veil was on my heart. I never saw it before because the veil was on my heart. When I got here under a prophet's ministry, the veil came off. And you know, I've heard people say that once that veil came off, they would be reading the scriptures, and Dole shares this, that the scriptures would just come right off the pages. They didn't do that for me. What happened with me was it was a knife in my gut. I would be reading along, and it was just like a knife would just hit my Stomach hit my belly right here. What was it? The word of God is a fire and it's a hammer. Love. And it was going into my heart. And these words would become alive. They would become spirit. They would become life and spirit. Why? Because the spirit would minister them. The veil came off. Do you know if you want to go on with God, the veil's got to come off. To understand the scriptures, like I said, I read this Bible through again and again and again, and it had no meaning to me other than a beautiful story and a nice history book. But it became alive to me. It became alive in my heart when the veil came off. Now, how does that happen? Turn with me to Acts 26. Amen. This is Paul. This is the Apostle Paul. And this is Jesus talking to Paul. And it says, and I said, Paul speaking, who art thou, Lord? And this is when God knocked him off his donkey. Amen. And he hit the dirt. And it was brighter than the noonday sun. And Jesus started talking. And he said, and Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Jesus was getting ready to send them to the Gentiles. Why? First phrase, to open their eyes. Amen. To open their eyes. To open their eyes. When did I see the gospel? When did it start working? When my eyes were opened. It says Lydia attended to the things of Paul and God opened her heart. When he opened her heart, he opened her eyes. And she saw the things in the scriptures. And you know what's wonderful about that? Turn with me to Matthew 7. You have an apostle and a prophet you're listening to right now. And I want to read you a couple verses to consider. Matthew 7. I love these verses. Verse 7. This is Jesus speaking. This is your Savior. This is the one that got you born again. This is the one that's speaking to you out of the scriptures. He said, ask. Ask. And it shall be given you. Seek. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it shall be opened. You know what? You can ask the veil be taken away. When you turn to Jesus and you ask, he will take the veil away. And it says, verse 8, For everyone that asks receiveth. For he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more? How much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Ask. If you, this word isn't alive to you, if it is not relevant in your life, if it is not life to you, ask. 
Ask the Father, and he will take the veil away when you turn to Jesus. Amen.